thank you for making it possible. Welcome to The Late Show. I want to start with an apology. I have been a bit cheeky tonight. Yes, indeed I have. What I've done is I've actually asked Howard to not sit here, but I've asked him to sit there tonight. Because, And the reason why is because sitting next to Howard is Hugh. I'm hoping the guys are following this. And these two people tonight, I would like to interview them because the... We did a, a program today, welcome Hugh and welcome Howard. I did a program today with, with Howard's help, which was focused on Hugh's life and pretty much the beginning of Christian television, how it formed. And it was such an interesting program. It, there was so much content in it. There was so much that came out that I knew nothing about before. I mean, I, I always knew that we were part of a mirac miraculous work of God but I never knew exactly how miraculous the whole thing was until I got the full story from you today, Hugh. So I know, Howard, we've recorded that. I don't know when it's going to be on or when the... the, the Hopefully in about a month, six weeks' time. You know, right. It gets when, into the schedule. That takes that time. It, it, it's a, honestly, it's a blessing. You will love it. So tonight what we thought we would do is just share elements of the story, elements of the account, really. It's not really a story. How did I, Christian television come to... B. How did it come into existence in the UK and in the European region anyway, from our perspective? And the, the two people, give us the two shot again, because I, I, we want the two gentlemen that you see in front of you, when you understand the story, you'll know that here are actually the two people who are, were at the heart of it. So welcome, I would say, to really, in a sense, and if I, if I say this, I think it'll be okay, to really the people that God used to found Christian television in the UK and Europe. That's a good, I think that's a fair intro, although neither of you would probably want to admit it. <laughs> I would take the blame for it. I was going to say, what is there, is there a, a credit or blame? <laughs> but, I mean, m m such respect for the both of you, obviously, and it's, a, it's an honour and a privilege to sit here and talk to you, to you both about what happened. And it was really fascinating. I mean, people would have to see the whole story. So what we're going to do tonight is kind of jump in at sort of the middle point. So to see the whole story of how we got to the point of what you're about to see, you'll need to see that program next week, so you, or whenever it's on in six weeks' time. So you, you, you'll have to imagine that you've heard the rest of the story. <laughs> but basically, I mean, you, the two of you met um, in, I would say, just an incredible way. God obviously brought you together um, to give a sort of a praise, as I understand it. There was a vision which you had you um, to do something with television but it was more uh, to do with sort of secular, te not secular but uh, terrestrial, tra television. terrestrial television mm. we should say. Um, you had a vision to get the gospel out there but you were looking to use that sort of medium. Um, you went looking for a TV man, you found Howard, he came into your midst, Howard introduced you, I'm praising it all down, to the Alex who went on to form the Christian Channel Europe, which became Dream Family Network, which became God TV as we know it today. Um, and, and somewhere in the process of time, and, and the viewers will get to understand this, there was going to be where Howard was going to be going back to, uh, to where he came from after a year, and that you get the whole story. It's so interesting. But then prophetic things started to happen in that you, you're having these conferences and you're still thinking you're doing this sort of UK-based, London-based television network and there's some other things going on, but all of a sudden you start getting these prophets coming into your church at the time, which is Cornerstone. And I'm telling the whole story, but this it's, is because you told me. It's good, you've done me. well. You've done well. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was such an interesting interview. And these prophets start coming in and they start to prophesy something 
and, and I can see, even in your face, in the recordings, in the faces, that this is changing your whole concept about what's happening. And not only is it changing it for you, it's changing it for us, it's changing it for all the viewers. It's becoming what's going to be television networks. And of course, Howard, you've played this many times, this, this clip that we're about to watch on the programme. never played it all, uh, not for a long time. We played parts of it. Uh, because it, just because it's so much easier to play part of it, uh, and I've always uh, sort of had a few critics who said, "Oh, I've, I've sort of edited it around." So what I did, knowing that he was going to be coming to talk to you about the history of Christian TV and in its uh, particular conception uh, or inception with Rory, Wendy, and myself and Hughes Church, uh, that we uh, show it all, all the prophecies. From both Dr. Noel Woodruff and uh, Jonathan David, they followed uh, a week apart, and they didn't confer, I'm sure, uh, with each other. In fact, they were in the middle of a preach, both of them, just giving another message. And all all of a sudden, they stopped and said, "You know what? God's telling me uh, this is going to happen." And then, uh, and it happened to both of them because I was filming one of them, and the, the second one, I was actually in the congregation because it was my last day in the church that time before mm. I was moving on and, and I, I found it I found it interesting listening to you this afternoon <laughs> uh, uh, because there are always things aspects of the, of the beginnings that you miss because you're in such a you know a flurry of trying to get things done and you, you were in our eagerness to make sure that uh, we were trying to obey God we and there was so much that you initiated you uh, along with uh, Julian Melfi as well, that you took a tremendous risk yeah. taking hmm. us on because when I came back from America, first of all, you, I like the fact you said you were looking for an American. Yeah. And I'd <laughs> lived there for 10 years and came back said, we met uh, through a conference that uh, yeah, was at Chris Sandown, wasn't it? Sandown, yeah, yeah. with Ray McCauley. Yeah. But there's a bit I'd love you to tell. Right. And that mm -hmm. is when you were making the switch from being a sound man to being a vision man, right? Because that happened before I met you. That That's happened right. in the States. Well, yeah, because I, Leslie and I had our own music studio, and we had that for ten years, and that was really good. And people used to say to me, "You know, you should get into television." They were thinking more of doing adverts, you know, and putting visuals to the the music and things that we did. And I said, I'm just not interested in television at all. I just, I, I used to watch Christian television in America, and I thought it was great and everything. But then God started to speak to me, and, th and there wasn't a church that I could go into without somebody speaking into my life that God was going to do something, he was going to use me, and basically to get involved in Christian television to do, to birth something like, similar to America. And that was an interesting point, mm. which... I think it was Noel Woodruff no, said, it's going to be almost, almost American. American. God's going to have this. great fun about this. <laughs> and he said, it will be almost American. And so, but I came back, and I remember on the aeroplane coming over, uh, when we were moving back full time to the UK, the Lord was saying, I want you to do this in a British way, but with the, what you've seen in America, you know, obviously they're very uh, good at it. Christian television because they've had uh, about 50 years of, mm. ahead of us uh, in doing this. So, but then to meet you and Julian, and then you said, "Look, you know, we want to do this." You had a similar vision, mm. and the two of us, or well, three of us, uh, and then eventually Rory Wendy, we formed this uh, production company or uh, organisation or what or department is more like in your church mm. at Cornerstone Bromley. And uh, then uh, yes, we'll, we'll see what unfolds. But there's just so much interest, I think, that our viewers would understand that, and this was something you brought out in the program there, uh, Hugh, is that it isn't a, an idea that man had. It, it, it's a God idea, and quite a lot of us, or few of us, for sure, didn't necessarily want to do it. It was something God wanted to do, and we were thinking, how do we do it? I can remember, do you know what, when you said uh, to me, uh, ha having said, look, I, don't th I think we need some more help, and I knew a couple that could probably help, because well, we were good friends, Leslie and I, with Rory and Wendy, and because we went to the same church in mm. Cornerstone, Asia, and we'd arrived at the same time, they'd come from South Africa, we'd come from America, and, and I said, uh, look, I, I can ask them if they will get involved, because they're very much media savvy, and uh, having talked to them 
till I was blue in the face one day, and they said, well, look, at that stage, said, we're not called to Christian television like you are, Howard, but we're called to doing films and yeah, things I like remember. that and scripts. <laughs> but then you agreed to take them on. They agreed to come on as well. So wherever we go from there, you started to work uh, with Christian, uh, sorry, with secular organizations to put Christian programs on, didn't yeah. you? Mm. ID television and all I, that. I don't know television, and that's where I, I sort of. You come it, in there, don't you? You know what's really weird about it, Howard, was that I, I how I got into Christian television. I was telling Hugh the, the, the other night was that I was watching a program on ID TV. Who I was working for ID TV at the time, and I was watching a program. It was Creflo Dollar, one of those. It guys. was Creflo. He'd and, been preaching at Cornerstone, and we put the the Sunday out that he'd been preaching. And I, and I, and I, I, I fell on my knees. <laughs> okay, so I'm watching the program that was produced on the, on the equipment that you brought in. Probably, I don't know if you were still there oh, producing, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah, probably, but, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I was watching that. I felt fall on my knees and say, God, make me a part of this. Then I, I, I pick up the phone and I call the number on screen. And who answers the phone? <laughs> you ask it. <laughs> Pretty rare. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and we have this conversation. I say... Your voice sounds familiar. Are you who was good? He said yes. And we, he then directed me to where the man of God was going to be preaching. I went to the meetings and received a, a confirmation prophecy at that meeting. Next thing I knew, I was working for IDTV. <laughs> Just incredibly how I got brought in. So I almost got pulled in by the, the inertia well, look, of what God was doing. Today. Yeah, All exactly. 12. Uh, well, 12 years with us and then all that, all that yeah. time before. Is it 22 years back? 1994? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, nearly, isn't it? Yeah. It is 1994. It's 94. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it's incredible what God was doing. And I, I want to ask you both a question. Did either, or, did either of you have... Um, I picked this up from you. Certainly, I don't think you'd really picked up on the, 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 the grandness of what God was doing until maybe the prophetic words started coming in. But from, or, or, or did you? Did you sense that it was... I, th I think I'm still, to be honest, even after 21 years, sensing that there's more. Yeah. Yeah. And I was sitting there when those prophetic words were coming, thinking, hmm, that's good. I always had a feeling that there was more, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what kind of more it would be. Mm -hmm. I certainly didn't know how much I would be involved. Um, I felt that we were doing something in London at the time. Um, but I sensed with... with Howard and with Rory that they were definitely carrying something more and that was a little bit of a tension for me because I wasn't quite sure what was for the church and what was for them you know. Well shall we play the prophecy because there may be people that are watching now that have never actually seen it. Yeah. Um, new think, viewers all the time. I think to start with Dr. Noel Woodruff but first of all chronologically speaking he came first yeah. okay and it was just the way that in the middle of the preach he says, you know, God spoke to me on the way over here. That's mm. what the opening line is. And I think the rest speaks for itself. If we have a look at that, um, and then we can come back. You also, you can see that how Hugh is involved in this as well. Because uh, Dr. Noel Woodruff was, uh, I mean, he could see into the future when there was nothing other than without uh, paying respect to Fran Wilder, mm. who was yeah. running uh, some Christian... Channel. Tele, uh, yeah. Christian television yeah. programs on a few hours each week. Mm. So I mustn't forget, friend, bless her. And, uh, but this was something that was going to be full on, full time, 24 7, 365 days a year. But have yeah. a look at this. This is the beginning of the words that were spoken about the beginning of Christian television in the United Kingdom. Yeah. Have a look. You see television networks beginning to rise in this country. God spoke this to me in the car when I was coming over. Uh, with, with Pastor Paul, God almost chuckled and said, listen, he says, I'm going to do something that's almost American. I'm going to scare them to death. He says, I'm going to do something that's almost American. He's having great fun about this. There's going to be television networks. There's going to be a great impact by media that's coming to the church in this nation. God is going to raise up people and provide everything that's needed. And there's going to be a strong impact by media that will grow, grow, grow and change the shape and the mentality of the church. People will never be able to think the way they thought before. Will never be able to conceive of church as they conceived of church before. 
It will be so radical that people begin to look at the buildings that have become so much a part of your tradition and culture and not be able to relate them to what the church really is. There's going to be a disconnection in the psyche of the people in this country from buildings and church. There's actually going to be a disconnection of things cultural and in your history. I'm talking traumatic change, internal change. God is on the move. He's changing the church. This is more than having a, a, a nice church and having evangelism. God is making disconnections and things that are, that are purely cultural. They shall surely come. There's an onslaught of media activity that's coming. And I believe the brother, uh, I, I, I saw the, the, the brethren call up our brother to pray for him. And uh, you, you, you are in the midst of it. You are, you, 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 you are stepping into it. You are, you are in, the, in, in the droplets of it. You are on time for it. You are moving with it. But this is something that's going to affect the whole church. It will not be a, a simply a cornerstone thing. There will be in other places and other peoples. And there will be connections and joinings and people coming to you. And there will be helps and there will be feedbacks and there will be interactions of things that will move. Many things will happen. God will affect the whole constitution of the media. God will affect the way in which religious people have spoken in your media before. There will be a changing of the concept of what the media is. With it shall come such an onslaught of the enemy. Such a reaction of traditional religious spirits. Such a backlash of condemnation. Such an unclean howling of the devil. As things within his kingdom that he has controlled begin to slip and change. Oh, he shall howl. He shall howl and he shall scream. And he shall cry out and shriek in terror. But there is a change ordained for this territory by the Most High God. We shall surely come down from His hand to you. You know, like the places men shall rise up and be given favor. And they shall begin to rise and come forth. And God will coordinate and bring these things to pass. And there will be a changing and a disconnection of minds and mentalities. And a plugging into something entirely fresh and new. There will be, there will be disconcerting things. And times of shatterings and times of... Of, of destabilizing in many ministries. But in the midst of this, God shall cause wise words to come forth from apostolic people. There will be men that God will put into the situation to hold things together, to speak peace into the hearts and minds of men when fears assail them. There will be those that have been established in strength. And my brother, there's a peculiar unction upon you, my brother Hugh. There's a peculiar unction from God. To stand at times of destabilizing and say into the hearts of men of God, be not afraid. Be not afraid. For this storm over you shall surely pass. There will be men that will say, be still. Be still. Be still to the storm. Praise God. I mean, I, I was trying to grab some of the words from, because every time you hear it, you, you hear something different. He talked a lot about the destabilizing, times of destabilizing, de destabilization, sorry. I don't know how he said it so, so well. He just loves long words. He just loves long words. <laughs> Disconnections and destabilization. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but the thing is that, that I, I really sense that as he was speaking, that a lot of these words that we were spoken all those years ago are actually relevant now. Mm -hmm. And we're in real times of destabilization. The channel's under pressure. And you, you just get that sense right now that listening to these prophecies right now, it's a very, very important. I don't know how you feel, Howard, but well, for me. I often think of, because I almost know the prophecies word for word, yeah. and when we started to go through some of the major problems uh, towards the end of last year, you know, with the Charity Commission and everything coming down, uh, saying we were guilty before they even had a look at us. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that was a terrible thing to happen. And we're still living through that now, but uh, nothing's happened uh, apart from, you know, we're just waiting for, for them to make a, a ruling or whatever. Um, and the thing is that could have brought the channel down, the way that they had put out, put out there to the public that we were guilty before we even uh, were investigated. They hadn't even looked at our books or anything. So yeah. anyway, that was the beginning. Then we've had all sorts of howling of the devil, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and those things that are actually, because the the devil is losing the airwaves. We all remember you used to pray a lot in mm. the church, you know, against uh, those things that come against the airwaves, and that we would take the airwaves back for God. Do you remember? Yeah, some of yeah, those, I remember that. Those yeah. words was often 
in the prayers <coughs> as a congregation. And I think that now, when we're in this time of destabilization, you know, a bit, bit unstable, can we put it like that? Uh, we could, we're tottering, but we're, we're not... Uh, we're not going to be uh, left by the wayside because God has a plan. And, yes. But the enemy's coming against us, so it needs times like this to be able to have godly men. And if there's a, a special unction on you, Pastor <laughs> a Pew, peculiar a peculiar that was the word, <laughs> a peculiar unction, he likes those long words, uh, I think that's, that's really reassuring for the likes of us. And, you know... Uh, God TV with Rory and Wendy had their, uh, they've got their trials and tribulations as well. We've got ours, and it's interesting that they come against, if you like, the two most effective channels yeah. in Christian TV in the UK. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting also in our position on the EPG. It's one and two in yeah. that, isn't it? Five eighty, mm. five eighty one, on uh, that. You know, so the, and yet there are many others, obviously, now that have joined the ranks of Christian television. Yeah. In fact, I believe the UK has more mm. uh, than any other sort of uh, nation, including America. You know, to have 17 yeah. or thereabouts Christian channels in the UK is disproportionate, if mm. you like, to other countries like America. Oh, so true. God has a plan to try and get this message of the gospel of Jesus Christ into the United Kingdom. And, and it's such a time as this. And mm. this is what another thing that Noel said. For such a time as this, Brother Hugh, you are being appointed to do this. To, maybe there is something else that you could do. Well, I'm sorry to give you another job. But <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that's interesting is that in a lot of areas, not just in Christian media, but in a lot of areas, I'm aware that uh, that word that Noel shared is probably true, that... I find myself having to speak to the storm <laughs> and reassure people in the ship. Mm -hmm. And I think that the media ship, if I can put it like that, mm -hmm. is a really important vessel. And God wants to use that. You know, and I look at that whole account where they get into the boat and Jesus has said to them, we are going to the other side. And they were going to the other side to set that man free and God has his way of reaching the people that no one else can reach. And that boat that they were going across the lake in was strategic for the liberation of the person on the other side. Yeah. And the storm act? comes, yeah, mm -hmm. and the storm comes. Now, when the storm comes, it's almost inevitable. You know, you know we can talk about the devil howling and everything else, but storms do just crop up on that Galilee lake. They just come from nowhere. Yeah. And, you know, and the, the problem in the midst of it is that you've got two problems. You feel that the ship is going to sink and you feel that everyone in it is going to perish. And that is the, the, the problem. And in a sense, when Jesus stood up and spoke to the wind and the waves, he, he saved the ship and everyone in it. But in a sense, he was able to do that because he'd already got this conviction on the inside of him that they were going to get to the other side, whereas everyone else was doubting that. Right. And I think somewhere in the midst of this, the thing that keeps me going is that there are a number of things that I get involved in where I have this absolute conviction that this is meant to be from God, mm -hmm. whatever it is. I mean, even some of the things I'm doing now with the Free Churches Group in, in England, I feel that that is so meant to be of God that I can't imagine it sinking no matter what the enemy or anyone wants to throw at it, because mm. I'm just so convinced that it's a vehicle to do God's will. And, and I feel that with Christian media. I pick up on what, on what Howard said earlier on about the special grace that's on you, because we were in the car coming over when I picked up Hugh from the airport, Howard, and, and, and I, was, I, was, I was in that mode of, of maybe complaining a little bit about the unloading. seeing, <laughs> unloading, yeah. <laughs> And, and Hugh, you were doing exactly what you're doing now. You were pretty much everything that I said. You were, it seemed that you had a slightly different perspective. And I think that possibly is, is so important to us at Revelation TV because your, your, your feet are on the ground. You're out there working with churches. You're talking to ministries from all different, from black ministries, Asian ministries all over the world. And you're connected with what's going on around the world. And it's important that, Howard, I'm sure you'd want to say something on this, but that that the prophetic element and the media actually meets with the church so that we're working together hand in hand. Because 
otherwise what we've got is something you know we're disconnected from the body mm. and it brought me such peace to hear you say some of the things that you said that it made me think well maybe we're not going to lose after all mm. maybe we are going to win this battle and it filled me with a lot of confidence I, I've got two advantages <laughs> one I've been around so you know I've been in quite a few countries and the other is I've been around quite a time <laughs> which means I've seen it yeah. all before yeah. in fact uh, uh, someone was trying to give me a big build up at a conference once and they were going on about prophetic gifts and all the rest of it and, and Marion, my wife, just said you're not really prophetic, you've just been around long enough to have seen it all before <laughs> you can tell them what's going to come <laughs> next <laughs> and it was such a wonderful yeah. sort of yeah. Bring but, out but, but, but it's <laughs> true Why in a sense a Why that? Why yeah, but it's yeah. good because it's true yeah. that in some ways yeah. when you know what the church has been through in the past yeah. and they've, you've come through it because it was God's will to see something birthed yeah. you've got that confidence that the God who did it once can do it again well I, I want to ask you another question before we go to the, the clip or, but I want you to answer it after we get the clip uh, that we're going to go and look at the second prophecy which happened about a week later which was now Jonathan David who, who was prophesying but there's something I want to talk to you about because it, I wanted to ask it during the interview we didn't get time you, you had an idea about where you were going or where, what you thought God wanted to do with this, these television people. And I, I, f I find it fascinating that here we have a pastor that actually you were more hands-off than hands-on in the sense that you were trying to let release people in their gift and rather than trying to hold on to them and contain You wouldn't them. have wanted to see a television program <laughs> that I made, I can tell you that now. <laughs> I think it's very important and I think that you, you would have a lot to say to, to people who perhaps have built visions and thought this is the thing that God wants to do, but then to have the, the grace to release it and say actually it's not me, it's actually you. I think that's something really huge and I'd love us to get a little bit into mm, that. Okay. But, but um, the next clip for the viewers who haven't and again, you'll see the whole story when this program's done. But in its entirety, this is the prophecy given again to, again, it was the three of you receiving prophetic words. It was Roy and Wendy Alec, and it was yourself. And, and I'll say, as we said, that, that in the clips, you can't see Roy and Wendy because... Yeah, the, they were in the, right down at the front in the corner. You yeah. see how uh, Jonathan David point to them. So yeah. I put a text up that, when it's saying this is addressing yeah. Roy and Wendy so that people know... Um, the cameras weren't in the position to get in the front row. As I they said, were it was behind the first them. week without Howard. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're learning how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so if, we, if you look at this, this is uh, something again that where this man of God had come to, to preach and teach at the Cornerstone Bromley Church, and in the middle of it, he just says, "Look, uh, there's something going on here," and uh, you'll see that from the clip. So have a look at this. Time to cross into the supernatural time to live on the supernatural which I believe many of you are going to break forth into I believe there's there's uh, people that in this place that you're going to break forth into the television network like never before like never before you know I believe there's some of you that are going to break into the business world like never before like never before now I want those of you God who have this passion, or maybe there's some of you involved in the television beside this cameraman. I want you to stand to your feet and let me speak over your lives. If you're involved in it. I believe very strongly, you know, for both of you that supernatural things are already happening in the heavens. God shows me that you are like a stone cut out from a different place. And God said, I shaped you, I formed you for a divine purpose. But like a stone cut up from a place, you try to fit yourself into so many places, you find you are the unfit stone. But God brought you here that you might become part of what He's doing here. And right across Europe, right across Germany, right across Russia, I prophesy to those of you who are going to watch this video that Europe shall have the message of God. You shall have it in your time. You shall not be one that will come and hunger and not have food, declares the Lord, to you, Europe. 
that though walls have broken down, that but I have done it so that I can come to Germany, that I can come to Russia. I will tear down, declares the Lord of hosts, uh, every wall and every dividing wall in the iron curtains and I will open the door once again for you and I will give you grace to hear my word. You have seen the powers of man, but now you shall see the power of God. You have seen how men have led you into poverty, but now you shall be clothed with abundance. Uh, once again, I shall restore you if you shall return and come back to my word. And I believe you have, as a couple, you have a tremendous influence that's going to take place. You know, people are going to hear about you. Even before you ever get on TV. I don't know if you're on TV. But before you ever do anything, people are going to have their hearts prepared. I see people even going into the Middle East. This work is going to go even to the Middle East. And there's going to be a great reservoir of riches. But you're going to establish it on the prophetic vein. It's not evangelistic only. It's more than just evangelistic. You're going to establish in what thus saith the Lord. It is going to be producing greater miracles of turning entire churches, entire men and women like never before. Entire churches are going to be positioned because of your network. Your network is not reaching the unreached alone. That's only about 20%. But it's going to turn the destiny of the church. Right. It's going to turn the destiny of the church where you can't go. Ministers can't go. But the whole church will turn. And when the church turns, you'll be a shareholder in everything that breaks forth. You will have spiritual dividends. Amen. And some of you, there, I, 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 that, that brother over there with the, yeah, with the spectacles. Hanging around his neck, not neck shirt. Sir, I, I, I believe with all my heart that God is going to do a fresh work in your life. Your life is going to find a real tremendous freshness of destiny. Of destiny. This is a thing that I feel the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart. It is going to be one of destiny. It is not going to be a ministry. But it's going to be one that is going to establish itself for a divine purpose, for destiny. I believe that you have been trying to operate it for this moment of time. For, for just a ministry, for a, for a work. But it's going to be one that is going to fulfill a destiny on your life. Because this is what God calls you for a divine purpose. That is an upgrading. Or right, there is a deep work of the Holy Spirit that God's going to work on the inside of your heart. But before a new thing that is going to break forth, that deep work of the Holy Spirit is going to come so deep in. What you have laid down in the future is good. Uh, sorry, in the past is good. But what is needful for the future requires a lot of reinforcing of old foundation and reinforcing of new foundation, which the prophetic dimension of the Holy Spirit is going to cover you and work upon you. And I believe very strongly, sir, that something is going to be established in your life in the next six months as a man. God's going to reduce your ministry. It's not for bad. It's cutting you down until you become one person. And then once he's finished the work, then it will become a real move of the Spirit of God through your life. But at this moment, God seems to be cutting you down, reducing you to smaller size. Maybe this size to this size. Does that suit you? <laughs> Amen. Or oh, that size. Or oh, you, you feel that way. Never mind. When you're nobody, you become somebody. But I really feel inside my spirit, God is reducing you. But don't misunderstand God. I find there is a temptation rising on your mind. That you, you feel that God maybe has left you behind. Or you have left. But God's saying, you let me work deep on the inside of you. You let me work strongly on the inside of you. And then I'm going to birth something fresh. What you have is not going to meet the needs. But what God is going to put into you is going to meet those needs out there. And I want to challenge you to look to the Lord for a fresh direction. For some time, maybe for a while, you may have to tone down, cool down and, and feel that God is working on you as a person. Because some of your frustrations are getting on to the work. 
You understand what I'm talking about? Some of your inner frustrations as an individual is getting onto the world. I, I, I mean, I don't understand what I'm talking about. It makes no difference to me. You can tell me all about it later on. You understand that's all I'm concerned for. Your frustrations are getting on to the work and God wants, you, uh, God wants you to cut yourself off from those frustrations and let the Lord minister deep down on the inside of your heart. Sometimes you feel let down by man. Sometimes you feel let down by God. Sometimes you feel you let yourself down by not taking the opportunity when you thought it came. There's never a greater opportunity that's ahead of you, sir. So much more is available in the spirit world for your life and ministry so much more you have you're not finished yet it's not the end of you sir I'll be back next year it's not the end of you isn't it fascinating to, to look back and see the the, the birthing of, of this channel and of course of, of uh, what we now know as uh, God TV Howard when when that word was being spoken to you. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's having a profound effect. I know you were pretty down at the time. Do you ever get the sense, because listening to those words, I, I kind of feel as if you, you've never, re you haven't had the easy road. You, you've always seemed to have the, 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 rougher, <laughs> the rougher trials in, in trying to get the whole thing together. And in a sense, his word is almost a little bit ongoing in some, in some ways. Do you, do you feel that at all? Yeah, yeah, I do actually. I, re <laughs> I relate to what happened there, uh, to, uh, to where it, it sometimes keeps coming up. Now, that could be a flaw in my character, really, because I sort of get to the stage where, oh, forget it, you know, it's not meant to be or whatever, um, and sort of down myself along with it, you know. So, um, and, and that is a weakness on my part, but it, I really should... As I did have the faith that Rory and Wendy would be able to start whatever it was they would start on Christian television because I believed in the prof prophetic word that was spoken over them, absolutely 100%, because I helped them to, to start um, putting a promo together, which took several months to do, to go to Sky in order to actually get the deal with Sky. And I remember in the first book that Wendy wrote, Against All Odds, there's a picture in there, and I'm the cameraman. But before we went in to sign the contract, uh, Wendy said to me, she said, you know, we've got no money. You know, we, I don't know how this, no, how are we going to do this? Because those are the days when really you had to have a lot of faith, walk into Sky and you're about to sign a contract for hundreds of thousands a year yeah. uh, for, for the channel. Uh, and, uh, you know, and I just said, look, in fact, the man inside said to Rory and Wendy, you know, when they were just about to sign the contract, um, so, um, uh, what about the money? And uh, I remember Wendy looking at me and uh, thinking, well, right, where, where do we go next? And I said, uh, Rich Daddy, you know? That's what I remember to say that. I thought, well, that's true, isn't it? You know, Rich Daddy, you know? Oh, yeah, okay, sign here. <laughs> and they signed, and uh, the rest is history. You weren't lying. No, I wasn't it? You know, Abba Father, thank you. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not, uh, from what I, I the thing that, what, looking at those videos has done for me this week is it's really reaffirmed the fact that and Hugh I'm sure you can back me on this that you know God's hand Howard is on your life I'm not ashamed to say it his hand is on your life and it has well, been <laughs> all the way well all the way through I think one of perhaps you're not the sort of person you don't blow your own trumpet in fact you're probably known for your humility rather than doing that. Um, but that doesn't mean just because you come in a humble shape. Even there, you can see that the humble guy, you've never really changed. But that doesn't mean that God isn't mightily using a person because they come across with, with that kind of humility. So, you know, for me, it's a great thing to see this and to see the person so people understand where the channel's coming from and why it has a heart in a way, of humility rather than sort of blowing your own trumpet. It's kind of your character that God's used, isn't it? I think, for me, I've always felt inadequate, really, because uh, there are people out there that are more qualified in many sense, diff different ways, you know, with different skills and gifts. Uh, but God, like, you know, when Samuel was there, he went to all the brothers of Jesse, uh, sons of Jesse, and he was choosing all the big ones yeah. and the ones that looked the part. And, mm. uh, you know, he said, no, I want that little boy down yeah. the road. You know, he's not ruddy even here. One. Yeah, <laughs> ruddy one. So I'm a ruddy nuisance. So, so, well, but that, that was, uh, you know, and I feel, well, you know, if God wants to do it, it took a long time for me to so, sort of 
give in to God because I thought, you know, got the God channel, well, what it's called? Yeah, God Christian, Christian channel, Christian then, channel then, then in the yeah. early days, wasn't it? And then yeah. CCE, Christian Channel Europe. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got other Christian channels by then. I think there was TBN and, and others as well that were broadcasting. Yeah. And, and I just say, you, don't, you need another one, like a hole in the head, surely. That's what, was, yeah. what I was saying to the Lord. But anyway, eventually it came about. Yeah. And uh, I still feel like, why are we doing this? But when I see the fruit here of what... The, the letters, the emails that come in yeah. and the people that say oh, what a big difference it's Praise made God. to their life. You know, and that, that's God. for me what, when Jesus said, you know, by their fruit you will recognize Praise my God. disciples. And, yeah. and if we're bearing fruit that lasts, it says, then we're, we're, we're doing what uh, the Lord wants great. Um, just yeah. keep doing it. But it's, I'm sure there's an easier way. <laughs> yeah. Hugh, can to I turn it. to you just for a moment and talk to you a little bit about Karen? What, what's Karen? I mean, I... I I don't expect you to be personal if you don't want to or anything, but obviously Howard mentioned that everyone's got their challenges. Rory and Wendy, there are challenges with the God, uh, God, cha God channel at the moment. Um, I guess I'm appealing to, to the pastor's gift in you. Um, there, 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 people say some rotten things out there. Do you know what? There's an email that came in a little while ago. Revelation TV is not God-led. I mean, I... End of story, the person says. And I, I sit here and I, I look. I look at the camera and I say to you, how could you look, see those prophecies, see the history, see what God has done, see how God has pulled it all together so intricately and turn around and just make a statement like that. And there, there are people who are probably, uh, well, not probably, I've seen them on the internet in the various blogs and, and so on and so forth, that are tearing... Um, God channel to pieces as well, and, and, you, and us, and Revelation too. Says pretty horrible things, and so they, a lot of them really are, not, are lies. They're yeah. not. There's half truths or bits of truths, and yeah. and they make all sorts of assumptions. Yeah. But there's too many um, coincidences or things that have dovetailed together. We've only just seen little bits of this, but this started like. Uh, 25 years ago in America for me yeah. and I'm sure for Rory and Wendy yeah. and others involved they started way back 25 or 20 odd years ago uh, and so it's not like it's been an overnight success or anything it's been something which they felt mm. that God was in this mm. and they walked through it and they were obedient no matter we're not perfect uh, God used That's David was day King Absolutely. David perfect yeah. he'd, he'd put, put man to death He'd uh, taken somebody else's wife. Yeah. Um, so, uh, well, in the Bible study before Moses. You, yeah. We were just talking about Rebecca lying and Isaac lying and Abraham lying. <laughs> imperfect people do great things for God. That's, that's one of the things we... we but we're, we're all saying. imperfect. Yeah. There, there's no yeah. one good, as Jesus said, only my yeah, exactly. heavenly father. Yeah. Even Jesus said that about his yeah. father. He's the only one that was good. Yeah. We hopefully change our character changes and we, we become more Christ-like. But yeah. we haven't arrived from the day, day one. Yeah make mistakes but hopefully uh, we make good for our mistakes and yeah. we learn from that and mm. the thing is Hugh what would you say as a pastor you know yeah. about about us Rory Wendy myself yeah. uh, in in a negative positive way if you get what I mean so yeah. that to counter the sort of things where people just say oh this is not of God yeah, how can exactly. they dismiss it with just a statement like that mm. yeah I think people do that um, I think some of it is a misunderstanding, you mm -hmm. know. Um, it, it, to go back to the illustration of Christian media being a vessel, and it is just a vessel. Yeah. And in a sense, it's a vessel that we sense God is willing to use. And we can get very confused at times because when God uses a vessel, it's because God chooses to use the vessel. Mm -hmm. It's not because the vessel's perfect. It's because God chooses to use that vessel. Yeah. When you look at the vessels in a different sense, move from the ship vessel to a vessel in a great house. When you look at that, the scriptural injunction is this, that in a great house there are vessels of gold, silver, wood, clay. Toilets. Some are for, you know, noble use and some are for ignoble use yeah. but what it says is this that we need to cleanse ourselves so that we can be fit for the master's use yeah. now 
people misunderstand that verse because it talks about gold and silver and wood and clay and they immediately think that the only vessels that God really wants to use are the gold and silver ones right but what it's saying is this that he will use wood he will use clay and the only thing that we need to do is to set ourselves apart and I think that sometimes people are making a mistake they're asking questions like is it God led yeah I think well we want to be God led mm -hmm. but the amazing thing is that we're God used <laughs> That's good. That somehow God's using us. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean for one moment that we're perfect. It doesn't mean that we can't be improved. Mm -hmm. I still feel that there are things that, that God wanted to speak into being that we haven't yet seen get there. Yeah. But at the moment, we're seeking to be vessels fit for the Master's use. We may be wood, we may be clay, but we're saying, Lord, we're setting ourselves apart from anything that is inappropriate and we're seeking to do that with all our hearts now other people from the outside might be able to look and say oh you missed a bit of dirt there or you missed yeah. something there yeah. because when people stand at a distance they see things that it's hard to see when you're right involved and close in and one of the big challenges in church life is that people who stand at a distance often claim to have discernment where it isn't really discernment, it's just distance that gives you a different perspective. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't get hurt when people point out the shortcomings because I hold on to the fact that, look, somehow God is choosing to use this vessel. Yeah. You know, it, it wasn't the greatest rowing boat that crossed the lake, but Jesus was in it. That's and true. that's what made all the difference. Oh, man. And, you know, it's nothing to boast about. But it's just the utter grace of God. And this is why I've got the conviction in my heart that these things will succeed, no matter what gets thrown at it. I know, and I mentioned this in the program earlier, that I was first challenged about Christian television by a pastor friend of mine who was looking after several hundred churches in the back streets of Pakistan ministering to people with next to nothing it was sometimes you wanted to take your watch off because you were the only person in church with a watch on you know you were there with nothing on your feet but you still felt at times that the gap was too big and there he was saying to me can't you do something with Christian television in the UK it was the first time I'd really thought about it mm -hmm. and you know I, I heard his heart and his heart was to reach people. He said, if I could use it in Pakistan, I'd use it in Pakistan. Yeah. And in some ways, it, it, it put me to shame for my complacency to think that, you know, that certain things that God wouldn't even want to use. But that which is sanctified, that which is set apart, God uses it. Yeah. And I'm so convinced of that. You asked earlier, you know, how it is that I've been prepared to say, you know, God bless you, go with this. Yeah. It's because, you know, I'm, when I first met Howard, there was a great humility in Howard. Yeah. And there was an incredible skill set that, you know, God had obviously prepared. Yeah. And uh, an ability to see things and put things together and a tenacity of spirit, which hasn't left him. I know he'll work all the way through the thing to see it through. Yeah. And, and that was incredible. And... and he was a man who could push things through in those early days. You know, okay. even at times when he didn't feel, feel like it, he'd still push to make it happen out of a sense of, well, if you believe this ought to be done, you will do it anyway, you know? But it was a, 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 an awareness that he could look at me and think, if you believe it, and I'd look at him and think, well, if you can do this. <laughs> and it was that kind of combination that made it possible. And in some ways, Rory and Wendy, bless them, they, they, they came into that. Yeah. And it was a joy, I mean, uh, just, to, just to have that relationship with Rory. I mean, I made mistakes, and but I know they're that. they're a very talented couple as very well. Talented. Brilliant. Okay, very, very, very creative, yeah. okay. Um, in many ways, 
And, and I think what you're saying there, Hugh, is it's really comforting to hear because none of us are worthy vessels in the natural, but because we, uh, God s sees our heart, it's, it's that which uh, helps, uh, would help others to perhaps, if they had a view from the inside instead of looking at the outside. Um, and it's easy to always criticize, but we're, we're doing it. That's the thing, and it's, it, yeah. it is, takes, it, it, I, if anything, I've got to be tenacious. Yeah. I am a little so-and-so in that regard. I mean, I sit in that room, hasn't, things haven't changed. I'll be here till it's finished. And in fact, I go, oh my goodness, I didn't realize the time again. At least mm. I don't live too far. <laughs> um, and it was just, when you're called of God and you, and you know, and you love God, I mean, we love God. It, it's not that uh, we're doing it for uh, any other reason other than it's something that you cannot explain when it's a call on your life and there's an urgency about it. In fact, this urgency has been ever since I was a child. I cannot sit down and just do nothing. And, and, and thank God that he's been patient and su supplied all the things that is needed. That was another part of the prophecy. Mm. How yeah. could we That's have got problem. all the things that it's not in the natural possible. Leslie and I were earning like, you know, she was on a school teacher's wage, which was probably about 13,000 a year. And I think I was on 12,000 a year at the time when we all went mm. to Cornstone and not just give, I mean, to come up with hundreds of thousands of pounds of the kit out of that is just has to be God, you know. Yeah. I so. think there might be an opportunity to pray for ple people tonight just because we've got a couple, you know, we've got a very strong anointing in the studio tonight and I think that'd be powerful. But just before maybe we do in the last few minutes, can I ask you both a question about each other? If there's a, I, this is right, just hopefully the Holy Spirit led. If there were one thing that you could say you've learnt from Howard and one thing you could say you've learnt from Hugh, what, w what would it be, having spent the years... Have I, have I put you on the spot? Oh, yeah, you, you have to think. <laughs> yeah, I've put us on the spot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that, I, you know, when you've interacted over the years and you've, you've learnt wisdom, that the two of you have learnt great wisdom. Is there a chunk of wisdom that you can maybe share that you've learnt from each other through the coming together of Christian networks? Well, there's something that I did spot with Howard right from the start, and that is he would work and work and work at something until it had reached a level of excellence. And that is something that really impresses me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes... I, I mean, the skill's there, there's no doubt about it. You, you know you're going to get something good, even if Howard had knocked it up in five minutes. Mm -hmm. But Howard would never be satisfied with what he'd knocked up in five minutes. <laughs> he'd still, still be working at it and working at it and working mm -hmm. at Nothing's it. Nothing's changed. And that was, was something that, that made a huge impression, okay, that level of time. diligence. So, Howard, over to you. Anything you could say? Well, Hugh had the ability that other pastors, and I'm not putting my yeah. other pastors down that have been involved no, in my life, I think but I it's just that going, they yeah. actually yeah. saw the vision yeah. and was such a, uh, a big relief to me because I thought maybe I'm going crazy, you know, because I knew the Lord would actually yeah. say, look, when I walked into your church at that special meeting, God said, this is the church that's going to do this yeah. for you, okay? And this is what's going to happen with Christian television. This is the church. And it was like such a big relief to me, you know, that I'd, I'd arrived there. Now, and you had the wisdom and the, the guts to do it, but you also have a calmness about you, which yeah. is brilliant. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. I mean, just the way you answer the questions. Yeah, yeah. And, you, and you need that stabilizing influence. Uh, and I think there needs to be more of a working together. We, we, we sort of went our separate ways and everything. Yeah. And I think now in order to go through the next storm yeah. uh, for Christian television to come out the other side without being torn apart, I think... Uh, we need you, Hugh. Yeah. Well, Hugh, we're going to give you the last minute. We've got this year, a minute and a half. Mm. Just maybe to pray for people who may be watching and they may have a vision to start something. And, you know, you've seen so many visions established. How would you pray for someone just in the last minute that may be looking for some inspiration from what we've heard tonight? Yeah, well, I definitely want to pray. I, I want to just acknowledge Julian Melfi as well yeah. because it was incredible to have someone alongside me who, who was absolutely relentless <laughs> he was determined to see these things come to pass yeah. 
And th there was a combination there as well. And I think, I know once or twice you said that was a factor, that, that, that it wasn't just a one-man show. Yeah. And I've always had a heart for partnership. Yeah. And I would like to pray for people, yeah. really, that they, that they find people that can partner with them to see projects fulfilled. Praise yeah. Timing is important, but partnership is important. So shall I just yeah. pray, Father? I just want to thank you, Lord for people that are carrying something on their hearts to do for you. And I pray, Lord, that you'll give them that confidence to wait for your timing, but also bring partners that into their lives that will help them deliver that which you want them to bring to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Amen. Well, we've got 15 seconds left. Can I say thank you so much to the both of you for coming, Howard, for yep. giving me yep. your chair for the <laughs> night, and also Hugh for being with us. It's just been so revelatory, and watch out for those programs. They're going to be absolutely brilliant to watch and very historical. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you to both. The programme you've been watching was made possible because of your support for the Revelation Foundation. Programmes take time, effort and money. If you'd like to make similar programmes possible, then please send your gift to the Revelation Foundation. The details are on the screen.
I'm mad.